Welcome everyone to the 2013-2014 Annual General Meeting of the Winnipeg Golf and Country Club. It's great to see so many faces out on a Tuesday. And some people say, why are we doing this on a Tuesday? Well, a couple of reasons. The Sundays uh, seemed like our attendance for the AGMs were starting to dwindle a little bit. So we thought, you know what, let's try it on a weekday. Maybe people won't be skiing. As many activities that happen on the weekend, let's try a Tuesday. And they say, why Tuesday? And because the Olympics ended on Monday. So we said, let's do it on Tuesday. <laughs> so we were trying to think ahead for that. So, And I have to say, too, probably should recognize this evening the great Olympic team and the great uh, results that they had this year. So way to go, Canada. And the team, fantastic. Very proud of the community. All right, to get the meeting started, I'd like to introduce from my left to right our board of directors. Uh, first of all, Ken Knowles and Tim Garbett aren't here tonight, and so they pass the regrets. But we have Mr. Gary Kruitzfeldt, Mr. Dave Coral, past president Cal Lane, secretary Henry Bears Mickey, vice president Sean Hennessy. <laughs> He's usually asleep in meetings too. <laughs> Treasurer Rob McKenzie. Uh, and I'll skip over to Dale Somerville and Bob Frender. And then what I'll also do is introduce our new general manager for this year, Mr. David Warren, to introduce his staff. Mr. Warren. Thank you. Um, just to put that correctly, I don't feel very new anymore. And I'd like it to be more than just this year. <laughs> but other than that, it was okay. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, <laughs> I've been working uh, a little bit harder than uh, I suppose uh, I hope to at the same time next year over the winter because we've been uh, in recruitment mode. So uh, happy to uh, introduce uh, the team. Uh, we're almost all here tonight, but on the far right, um, does anybody know Darlene Davis? <laughs> Darlene's. Uh, the assistant she's uh, she's uh, actually recording uh, the uh, meeting here tonight, so behave with what you say. Um, and uh, in the back, now I'm going to go on my right, and that's uh, Jeff Smith, and everybody will know our executive chef, Jeff. Uh, working all day baking cookies. And planning for the upcoming season. Sorry, Jeff. Glenn Jenneru, everybody. And um, Jason, and if I say his last name wrong, he'll he'll uh, he'll excuse me. Nachu. All right. Uh, it was uh, it was a real um, <laughs> it was a real voyage, journey, etc. Um, getting down to making uh, the decision on Jason, and I'm so pleased that he's here tonight. Uh, next week we have um, Carla Holton uh, beginning with us, and she's going to be the Food Beverage Services Manager, but uh, given she hasn't started, we thought it wouldn't be appropriate for her to be here today. Anyway, so she's starting, we have the team, and we'll be ready for the season, so that's the team. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dave, for you and your great new team. We're really looking forward to this coming year. I guess a little bit of housekeeping. If I get everybody, if you have your cell phone turned on, if you just turn it to vibrate or turn it off, that would be great for us. And I am amiss, but I should have also introduced our ladies president for 2013, Miss Rachel Chung. All right, and I do, I have counted, and we're over 25, so I declare a quorum. And with that, I call the meeting to order. I'm sure everybody's looked over the minutes of the 2013 Annual uh, General Meeting on February 24th in 2013. So if I could get a motion, please, to approve the minutes. There's a motion to approve the minutes, 2013 general, Annual General Meeting, February 24th, 2013. Call for a seconder. We have a seconder. Yes, and your name, sir? John Dodds. John Dodds. Is this working? Thank you. Yeah, you. Okay, good. So that's the motion. And okay, this might not last. Yeah. 
forever. Uh, wouldn't be the first time for me either. We can hear what you did you do? Turn it on. So any questions that you want to ask, we'll be asking them then. Obviously, there's questions during a motion that uh, are pretty to that motion, and we'll obviously have discussion on that. <clears throat> All right. 2013. So a lot of new directions and ideas. It was a year that saw major changes in the senior management team. It was a year of progress. And then one that was, has set the building blocks for our future. At last year's annual general meeting, the past president Ivan Rasa stood up and said uh, he would like to make sure that we were really watching our finances. I can clearly say that that rang out throughout the board throughout the year. There were some mistakes, perhaps, but we definitely were always trying to stay on target with that. With that, I'm proud to announce with the guidance of our treasurer, Rod McKenzie, and the finance committee. We have navigated to one of the most successful financial years in recent memory with a surplus of just over $214,000. We also had new governments come in, and the mantra was hands off and eyes on. So strict policy and procedures were implemented. The senior management team and staff bought in 100% on it to the approach and to the finances. I remember Jeff kind of saying, numbers for us, I just want to cook food. And by the end of the year, he was saying, well, this makes a lot of sense and it's really helped the, that side of the house. So we appreciate the way management brought in and bought in on it as well. It resulted in the club rarely waving from its budget and financial targets. And if it did, it was easily identified and addressed. The policies and procedures implemented in this term will do well for our clubs in the future. Many of those have been put in place and we're looking forward to that. <coughs> This past year, the long-standing operational committees that many of you might remember were the Golf Activities Committee, the House and Properties Committee, they were all eliminated. This is a bold change, but this is the way that the board had run for more than most people can remember. The new method of management, leadership, and communication was introduced with the board focusing on setting policy and just policy and evaluating the attainment of goals. This new governance is being proposed tonight with membership approval will be reflected in articles of association. The new governance will also allow for the club to receive the benefits of the skill and expertise of our members at large in standing operational committees. We all owe a significant debt of gratitude to Ken Knowles and his committee for all the work they've done and put in over two years. It was an amazing amount of work that they all put together and the quality of the document uh, speaks to that. In June, Glenn, informed the Board of Directors that this intent to step down as General Manager. Can't imagine why. Why would one guy want two jobs? <laughs> Sometimes it would take three to do. He did an admirable job, and uh, the Board was very respectful of Glenn's decision and thanked him for his service to the club. He stepped in on a very difficult time there when uh, we were kind of left short. It was clear with the proposed governance model it was necessary for the new GM to be able to handle the wide range of roles, responsibilities, and communication. One of my most important goals as president was to put into place a GM who was able to concentrate his or her efforts to this end. In July, with Sean Hennessy, as the chair of the selection committee, selected David Warren, an individual, an individual who has wide, extensive experience in skills, finances, human resources, customer service, food and beverage, and event management. I hope that's not all making you too nervous, Dave. I did say anything about microphone management. Yes. <laughs> Dave is putting his team into place for the spring, and he's in an exciting position where he has the opportunity to build his team for the skill sets he sees necessary for meeting and exceeding the expectations and goals that the winning has come to expect. Bob Brender chaired the Integrity Committee. This committee was thorough, 
taking in and prioritizing all comments from members, the committee, and our architects without care. The changes made were done on a very tight budget with safety, playability, and maintenance in mind. The direction and process with which Bob and the committee performed was exemplary. <coughs> Henry Burris Nicky, chair of the Clubhouse Integrity Committee for the second year. The traction that he made along with this committee was evident in the clubhouse. The committee has put in place a plan and strategy for future years to ensure that this important asset of our clubhouse is maintained and improved, along with the highlighting of the walls and celebrating our history within the, club, club, within, within the clubhouse. A board alumni committee was created this year and chaired by myself and Al Nagy. In the spring, we had a very successful event honoring one of our longtime members, Dave McAvoy. And we're looking at maybe having this as an annual event. The Transition Associate Program has been very successful in initiating uh, initiative has attracted successful young members to our club. With this success, the program will continue and be monitored for the future. We've got actually a number of people already signing up again for this year for it, and it's a, a great attraction for, to get that type of member in. This past season, though, continues to see a bit of a decline in participation in most aspects of the club. One of the challenges of our new head professional, Jason, and his team for 2014 will be to reignite the passion of our membership. I recall early in my years of the winter where you had to sign up sometimes weeks in advance or the event would be full. I can tell you those years are some of the ones and most fondest ones I have as a member. The city now being built up to our gates, forces that we've not had to deal with are now upon us. In the future we'll have to consider ourselves with security as we now have more and more uninvited guests with their motorbikes and their trucks coming down onto our property. <clears throat> Changes were also necessary along number eight for the new subdivision spillway. With the berm and other cosmetics, we should have a little disruption to the lines of our golf course. Uh, blocked uh, due to Glenn and his work with his team there, making sure that happens. With Alberta's exploding economy, it led the nation. This has been to the benefit of our club, in some ways to the detriment. The proximity of the city to the Windermere makes it an even more attractive option for golfers. However, with this economy, challenges includes employee hiring and retention. A challenge for the foreseeable future for Dave and the senior staff, and one that we'll have to address to make sure that we always make this an attractive place for employees who want to work in the state. Overall, it was a very successful year for the board for all the accomplishments and goals that, we, that were met. The Windermere is a better port, and in each endeavor, I always like to say, did we make a difference? Are we in a better place? And the answer I've repeatedly heard is yes, we have, and yes, we are. Throughout the year, board members and members at large have put in countless volunteer hours for the betterment of the winning year. I would personally like to thank them all. Uh, so many that, uh, that do put in the time that it's, it would be difficult to mention all their names. And to all the members who shared their thoughts, I enjoyed discussing and listening to you, your ideas, your concerns, your accolades for the club. You have all made a tremendous contribution to the Windermere and also my term as president in making it a very rewarding and memorable one. I can say from my business travels I've been to over 500 golf courses around the world and on every major continent. I truly believe, I truly believe being a member of the Windermere gives us pride and privileges at one of the finest. The caring members the finest golf course and clubhouse, <clears throat> our stunning River Valley setting, we are, and I believe we will always continue to be, the golfers by the club of choice. <laughs> Yeah, 
That's like asking Jack in the first tee, Jack, can I get a couple more strokes because you're hitting well and I'm hurt? No. You're always in the end, yes. Jack, then if you want, just uh, go with our knee then. Behind door number one. For the people that have their vote cards, have you all voted for the uh, the board of directors? Has anybody not? Okay, see none. Okay, Dick, that's all voted. Very good. Yes. All right. Next on the agenda is our financial presentation and auditor's report from Mr. Rod McKenzie. comments about the winter year and uh, uh, courses around the world that kind of brings a tear to a glass eye. But um, thanks Kurt, for your comments. And I've been uh, given the pleasure of presenting the uh, audited financial statements to the members. The statements have been audited by uh, uh, Monsieur's uh, Mowry Gill and uh, uh, our auditors and they have done an exceptional job in uh, helping getting uh, some recommendations to our to our organization and also being very cooperative in uh, getting all of the work done uh, within the time frames that uh, uh, are uh, very important to us. Included in uh, your AGM package was my treasurer's report and I'd like to summarize that report uh, to some degree. It is a, a brief summarization, so if you'd like to uh, take a look at the actual uh, uh, report itself for more details, please do so. Uh, both your directors and finance committee feel that the club is in good financial condition. The finance committee has taken steps to substantiate, to substantially improve accountability, operations, and its associated reporting. This is a continuing process. The Finance Committee is pleased with its changes, both current and proposed. A strong and involved Finance Committee is essential to the continued strength of the winter. The Clubhouse has now been open for approximately 27 months, and we are now in a much better uh, position to be able to properly budget. This really helps us out in the, in, in the budgeting process and arriving at the costs that uh, relate to the heat, water, light, and everything else that's uh, in this building. And uh, for the first um, year, stub year, small year, uh, it was particularly difficult. The second full year, uh, it was uh, challenging, and now it's kind of start, starting to take shape and it's kind of smoothing out, and, and it's much more, uh, it's much easier to budget for up upcoming expenses. and. Uh, with that comes an awful lot of uh, uh, improvements that will be noted along the way in uh, the clubhouse. Efficiency uh, uh, improvements. And um, uh, the board and finance committee are pleased that the club's house operations were on budget last year. Uh, house's previous large losses are no longer. In fact, house's actual operations are at a small surplus for profit. Uh, that is before any allocation of overheads to the operation of, uh, of food and beverage. Uh, management training and corrective systems are now showing their effectiveness. If we go on to the balance sheet, uh, uh, the main thing in the balance sheet is really only two items of really any significant degree. And they're really kind of minor issues, and that is the cash on hand happens to be a lot higher uh, on, the, on the balance sheet than budget. And the reason for that is that um, we're now paying our bills uh, uh, more in line with the terms of, uh, of whatever our suppliers had. And so we're now holding on to our cash a little bit longer than, than in the past. So that's very much of a, of a positive cash management uh, improvement. Uh, going on to the income statement, 
course management, or mm -hmm. course maintenance, I should say, was $105,000 under budget. That primarily related to hourly wages, the wages of uh, $46,000 being less than what budget uh, was expected to be. And some of that was just simply because lack of lack of bodies and, and also weather weather conditions. So it it isn't because of anything else other than that. Uh, um, everything got done. Uh, some of the special projects that Glenn had in mind didn't quite get done just simply because of weather and uh, uh, warm breathing bodies wasn't always a, an easy thing to obtain. Um, also in course maintenance, the uh, a lower operating <coughs> lease costs of $66,000 contributed to the $105,000 being under budget for course maintenance. Um, administration's overage primarily related to clubhouse repairs of $41,000 in excess of budget. House operations was under budget by $24,000 due to lower wages of, uh, of $24,000 and $11,000 I'm sorry, lower wages of $11,000 and all other underages of $13,000. Entrance fees were $30,000 or $60,000 under budget. These fees are direct correlation to shares sold. Uh, our current entrance fee is $8,600 per share sold. The number of shares sold last year was five when we had budgeted for 12. This year, um, we've exceeded, I believe, we're almost at the, the same level of 12 already this year. So it's a vast improvement over last year. As uh, Kirk had already mentioned, uh, um, uh, we've reserved an area on the agenda for uh, Q&As related to our club operations, finances, and any other area you may want to ask of your directors. We'll answer all of those questions at that time. In closing, I'd like to thank all the members for all of the comments that they've made to me and indicated all of the areas that were of concern, interest to them. Anybody that brought that up and anybody that would had comments passed on to me through others, I, I appreciated it very much and we tried to uh, bring it forward at the various meetings to address those issues. And in conclusion, as I say, I'd like to thank each and everybody for that uh, ability to do so. Thank you very much, Rod. Item 6, the ratification of the activities of the board. I can ask Dave for a motion. I'd like to move to ratify the activities of the, of the 2013 Board of Directors. Do we have a seconder? Angus? Any discussion? Seeing I'd like to call for a vote. All in favor of the motion? Please raise your hand. Opposed? Here. Did you oppose? No. Okay, item number seven, special legislation to approve the revised articles of association. I can ask Janice Hall for the motion. I move to approve the special resolution to approve the revised articles of association as detailed in appendix. <coughs> Thank you, Janice. Do I have a seconder? Bob Sparrow. Thanks, Bob. And what I'll do at this time is I'll ask Cal, who's a member of the committee, to just give a little bit of uh, background in uh, the process. And the uh, a couple years ago, we went to a meeting, the whole board of directors uh, went to a meeting at the Derrick regarding the new governance of associations like ourselves. Our and at this time, it was determined that there was enough evidence that we should probably investigate uh, and put a committee together. <coughs> Uh, to examine how we're governing this uh, course. So we did, and under the direction of Ken Knowles, uh, and then Ken went out and recruited these two highfalutin lawyers, Peter Lown and uh, <laughs> Herb Schlotter, and they brought us up to date on what's going on in the world. And they are very knowledgeable. So uh, Henry and, and I kind of sat in and listened, 
and Ken also listened while these two guys took over and uh, really uh, created this document. And uh, we offered as much of uh, the input as we could, but uh, overall, these guys uh, had the knowledge of uh, creating. Uh, they had the knowledge of the governments and what what government should be and stuff like this. So they created this document, and uh, I'm all for it. So there we go. Thank you very much, Cal. Yeah, and I can tell you that the breadth of work that they've done, what well, was just amazing, and I think it's actually it would be a blueprint for any other club that wanted to look at the government. So I'll ask if anybody has any questions or any discussion on the motion. All right, this is a very good milestone for our club with this, with this new government. So if I could ask for a vote, all in favor, please raise your hands. Opposed? Very good. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. It is now time for the nominations. And I'm going to ask, are there any of the uh, candidates are they here today? Uh, Ken Bancroft? Ken Knowles, which I know he's away. Uh, Nikita Breckenridge. Talca. Talca. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, looks like an L. <laughs> and Ron Sills.
we're now at a point where, uh, regardless of Glenn's great ability to repair and keep running old, old equipment, uh, we're now at a point where we're starting to have to replace that equipment with new equipment, and, and uh, uh, the fleet is, is being gradually increased uh, in its, in its uh, age, or reduced in its age. <laughs> So, if that answers your question, uh, Henry, that uh, that's um, one of the main uh, uh, thrusts in, in, in coming. We've got an organized plan in trying to um, bring up the level of equipment that's required. Uh, in some cases, some of this equipment uh, could have been a little bit of a, uh, an accident waiting to happen. It could have been. Uh, 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 Areas that could be just uh, uh, breaking in the very near future, and we have no ability to get a replacement for that. And certain areas, of course, may be may be hurt because of that. So, have, we're having a proactive approach towards the equipment replacement is one of the directions of the, of the board. Any other questions? There being no questions, I guess we'll have to come back to the vote. Uh, uh, just call for the call, we'll call for a vote then. All in favor of. Schedule B, 2013, <coughs> If then I could go on to the next, which is uh, to make a motion to approve the 2014-2015 short fiscal year capital budget as detailed also in attachment B. And if I could call for a seconder on that. I'll second that. Dale, thank you. <coughs> Any uh, comments, questions? Discussion? There being none, then uh, I would call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And uh, Kirk, if I could pass this on back on to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so moving back to the nomination of our three new directors. We do have the result, but before we do that, I'd like to introduce our uh, ballot counters, Ms. Darlene Davis, <laughs> Pat Pam Walka, yes, from, and she's from Mulberry Gill, uh, Catherine Oldman, and Jack Broadfoot. And in alphabetical order, our three new board of directors for 2014, for the new three year term. Mr. Ken Bancroft, Natalka Breckenridge, congratulations. Great to see you. And Mr. Ken Knowles will be returning to the board as well. So, thank you very much. I can see you. Exciting times. It's great to see you. So regarding the land sale, if everybody does know, we have a, a piece of land up at the top of the hill there that we're looking at selling. Um, the economy definitely is a, a heated one, and this one we're actually looking at making sure that we take advantage of that if we do sell this land. So first I'd ask Mr. Gardner, if you make a motion please. Yes, Mr. President, I move to approve the special resolutions to borrow monies to complete the subdivision of the surface land, approve the sale of the surface land, and application of the sale proceeds, all the details and attachments. Very good. We have a seconder. Dave, thank you. And if I could ask Mr. Warren to just give a, give a brief rundown on the facilities. <coughs> okay. So with the uh, with the land sale, um, what I did for myself, as you can well imagine, given my um, tenure here, is I. A little bit of a uh, went through a little bit of a chronological history. So, um, just very quickly, though, I think that this process, from my perspective, uh, started back in August of 2012 um, when there was a letter um, from the subdivision authority uh, approving um, the subdivision of the land, and of course, that was based on a number of conditions. Um, in August of the year just passed, um, the club asked and was granted an extension. Um, to the um, uh, get uh, to meet the conditions, 
And, uh, and the message that I would, I would send to you is one that I was received, was that to ask for another further extension would be, um, would be risky. And in fact, uh, if the club didn't get that extension, um, then we'd be in a situation where we would have to start the process all over. There has been effort and money spent uh, to date in getting it to this point, and that, that money might, uh, might just be forgotten uh, for not. Um, I will say to you that the largest piece of uh, the expenditure to actually finalize uh, the land for sale is what they call an arterial road assessment. And I think in simple terms what that means is that particular piece of land and the club in this case, um, you know, share in, in expenses that, that other landowners uh, in the development uh, up top will be sharing in. And that particular piece is, is, quite, uh, is, is quite hefty. It's uh, almost $200,000. Uh, for that, I can tell you that uh, back in uh, 2012, that there was um, uh, a presentation made to uh, the steering committee for their territorial assessment asking for um, some relief on that, and that relief did not come in that. Their decision was to apply the full assessment. So uh, all of this is happening around 2012, 2013. Um, my final uh, comment, uh, well, a couple of final comments are um, that um, uh, the uh, club also went out in November of, of last year and got an appraisal report. You can imagine um, that the club wants to be in a position where whatever the land sells for, the membership uh, sees as, as a good price or a reasonable price. And I can tell you the uh, side of that appraisal was one and a half million dollars for that piece of land. So. I think that makes the efforts to date uh, certainly feel and look well, uh, worthwhile. The um, final comment I would make to you is, is what happens with those monies. And I think that uh, in line with um, uh, decisions of this membership and shareholders back in 2009, when you were voting on the construction of this beautiful club base, there was a mention of the redundant land and the interest in selling it. And that, in fact, the, uh, the understanding, whether it's uh, in writing or in spirit, was certainly that those monies would go to reduce uh, this new debt, which the club has right now. So that would be the proceeds of the land. So at this stage, with your approval, um, the arterial road assessment gets done. There will be some, some consultancy fees. Uh, the club needs to uh, move towards the sale of that land. And when that happens, at what price, and whether, in fact, uh, there's assistance required to do that, uh, a few of the unknowns, but that's that's sort of where we stand right now. So I think we've come a long way, and I think we have a much shorter way to go uh, to sell the land. And as, as Kirk mentioned, uh, the economy is is pretty ripe for a sale of piece of land like that. So close to my mind. Right. Thank you very much, Dave. <coughs> so regarding the, regarding the land, and do we have is there any discussion or questions regarding that? Kirk. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Stewart, I have a question. Yeah, Jim. What uh, what will it be the change in the taxes on that piece of property if and when it is in fact subdivided? Um, Does anybody go to that tell? <laughs> It'll be going up. Well, that's, <laughs> that, that's my concern. I mean, yeah. I, you no, know, the, the, the economics sound very good. We've got a million and a half dollar piece of property, 200,000 plus in expenses, but the taxes are going to significantly increase for that parcel. And so there'll be some urgency to sell that property in a timely manner, such as not to incur large taxes going forward. We, we have a, we have a uh, lease on that property until November of this year, and but that doesn't uh, forego us from uh, starting the process to sell it for after November of this year. Uh, but anyway, the, we're going to do our due diligence. Well, the, the next board is going to do the due diligence very soon after. I can I, I think it would be. Fair, uh, your assessment would be fair that we want to move the, those monies into our hands as soon as possible. Yeah. Right, and I, I, we budgeted for the tax increase, just uh, you know, such that uh, right. if we have to carry that for well, fiscal year. We budgeted for uh, an estimation of that, yes. And what do you recall what number that is? I, I recall that the estimation was probably around a $15,000 figure for just raw land. Now keep in mind, too, that that is residential. Until it's subdivided, it's considered to be a large lot residential. And uh, I think that's the term, is it Cal? Uh, I'm not sure. But anyhow, it's, it's, a, it's at a much, much reduced rate than, um, than uh, a regular city, city uh, um, 
properties. But, but it is you know, still pretty significant from the standpoint of uh, the dollar figures. And, um, we haven't uh, uh, included um, a large increase because we didn't feel that the subdivision was going to be happening for this oncoming year, and I'm not sure what's going to be happening in, in the year that, year that follows. I can recall that figure. Henry, get a comment? Just, just on, a, on a timing basis, you know, we, we could sell a lot with a settlement date past November of next year. We're restricted by two items. One is the subdivision process with the city. The second is this land lease that we've given to the neighbor, whereby the, the neighbor can use the lot until the end of November of 2014. But I don't think that precludes us, doesn't preclude us from selling it earlier with a settlement date of, say, December 1st, 2014. Right. So that's something we could undertake. And it's a process we'd have to go through whether we did it this year or the next year, but it's a good question about having budgeted for taxes. I appreciate that. So, another question, yes, sir. John Dodds. Uh, I'm aware that we have some members of the board who have some expertise in the, the digital development process, uh, but I, I wonder if the board had considered just simply selling the land outright without having to go through this process and let a subsequent uh, owner do the development. Well, we, we didn't have, we, we, need a, we need a title to the land to be transferred, uh, I mean, we had to subdivide to get a separate title. Currently, it's on the 99 acre title that is the golf course, and it, we, we could not deliver a title, so we couldn't sell it without the subdivision. Course. And we're really not in, the, in, the, in a development mindset, we're in a subdivision mindset to create a land title that we can transfer to. Thank you, Dave. Yes, sir. Brian Williams. Uh, has any thought been given to uh, optioning the land to someone who, you know, to get an early commitment? In other words, to look for someone to option the land and actually and pay a fee up front and with a agreed price after November? The short answer is no. <laughs> I tried to do it for $250,000, the board wouldn't agree. <laughs> I think, you know, it's been, going, it's been taking time to go through the, 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 the process, and now we're, we're getting closer to the end of the lease, uh, and this gentleman, of course, has the first right to refusal in this land, so the, the, the general managers of the day have been trying to see if he's been interested, and... Uh, and so we're, we're getting closer to feeling comfortable that we can sell it. And so now that we get the services, and uh, not the services there because there's not going to be any services, but the road lines, yeah, then we'll be able to go forward. So I think that, yeah, if somebody came and approached us tomorrow, hey, we would uh, yep, find our legal counsel and see what we could do. Yeah, somebody threw a large number at us. We're, we're business people are doing and we're as a business. So we definitely consider it. Thank you. Any other questions? So is this vote an approval for the board to sell the land, or is it approval to proceed with this subdivision? It is. The, well, the motion is to <coughs> borrow the monies to complete the subdivision of the surplus land, approve sale of the surplus land, and application of sales proceeds, proceeds all sales and tax receipts. So for both. So it also be down the debt. Yes, and the debt, yes. Good. Any other questions? Like this land, I mean, is it, is it not going to go up considerably over the next few years? Again, we're just looking at subdividing it. I mean, that's, that's a million dollar question. It's gone up a lot since this everything has moved towards us in the city. So, um, you know, it's under advisement, like the gentleman said, we've got a lot of experts here on, on the board that are in the real estate business. Maybe Bobby Bobby was president when this thing started. It's a it's about a two and a half acre site, I think, isn't it? Point two hectares. Point two hectares. Point two hectares. Okay, so anyway, almost half of the site is riverbank. It's undevelopable. So it's a it's a reasonably small building pocket for an estate style home. And um, I would suspect that our highest and best value is, you know, we're at the top of the market in that world right now, and 
Um, you know, and we're we're at the best place we can be in terms of getting that thing sold. <coughs> Yeah, I think in the discussion, our downside is probably a little bit more than our upside where we are right now with that, with the price that we uh, we've had an appraiser look at it. So. I also think if you looked at 20 year average land prices in Edmonton, if you take what we're getting today, a 2014 appraisal against the 20 year <coughs> average, my estimation we would be two to three times the 20 year average. It could continue to grow, but that's crystal ball gazing. But if you take a historic perspective and look backwards as to you know, what is land, especially residential land, what is it selling for in Edmonton today as opposed to that, say, that 10 or 20 year average, we are very high. So, you know, bird in the hand you know, versus uh, you know, speculating. Yeah. At the same time, I think I direct the board to be that we have a very nice piece of land there, and if we have to sit on it for a year or two to get the price, then I would say yes. Just sit on that. And also realizing it's going right up against our debt too, so there's a deduction of that. Mr. Sparrow. Uh, I think when we started this process, we were happy with six to eight hundred thousand. That's <laughs> so, right. <I> know. <laughs> so that's kind of where it's gone now. So yeah. Yeah. I think Gary was yeah. saying that's kind of where we're exactly. at. He knows the market as well as anybody. Yeah. 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 So regardless of where we're at, nothing's rolling in the door. Yeah. yeah. So you know, we'll sell it for what uh, the market will bear. Yeah. Okay. Whatever somebody will pay for it, right? And it's found the money. Yeah. Never been in our books before. Any other questions? Very good. So, hearing none, I'd ask for a vote. And then, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? Here we go. Thank you. What? 11. Quite good lottery. Mr. Rob McKenzie, please. <laughs> I would like to make a, a motion to appoint Mowry Gill LLP as uh, auditors for the 2013-2014 uh, 12 month period and the 2014-2015 4 month period, short fiscal year. And uh, I would call for a second year. Thank you. And um, any questions? There being no questions, then I would call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Very. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So that brings the formal part of our meeting to an end. I would like to thank the board of directors for an incredible year this year. I can tell you that there was very lively conversation. There wasn't a lot of things that ever went undiscussed. There's always other points of view. Uh, so to the people that are going out, uh, Mr. Cal Lang, I don't know if is, but he's coming back on. And Mr. Hennessy, thank you very much for all your hard work, gentlemen. And Cal, we're glad to And Mr. Neil Allen as well. He's, he's been an incredible asset to our club and he's probably the, uh, you know, called the father of building this clubhouse, so uh, thank you very much to Mr. Neil Allen. Um, congratulations to the new people coming on the board. We're excited to have you aboard. And for everyone for coming out. Yeah, you make a difference uh, with your passion coming out to these meetings. I know uh, sometimes you are not the most exciting things, but they are very important within the club. And uh, so thank you very much for all coming on our this evening. Very good. So what I will do is I will ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. If I can get a motion for that. Thank you. And with the meeting then to withdraw, we are now going to have the Q&A. So any questions from the floor will be taken. And Kurt, can we want to ask uh, if people get a coffee or water or anything? Just no. wash and break. No, I've already do it. No. <laughs> yes. All right, let's go. It's, it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, they are, we 
you might as well not put anything. And if those are the, as was answered, if those are the statements that are being presented to our board of directors at their meetings, um, I don't know what you could possibly get out of them. Okay, thanks, John. Um, I'll have broader bill. I know the other day coming president talked a little bit about that this morning. You want to answer or what? Sure. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think that there was a, an awful lot of discussion around the board table about that, that whole uh, topic. And some, some people wanted uh, a lot of detail, but uh, other people wanted very little detail. Um, so what was decided around the, uh, around the table for the vote was the team. Is everybody here okay? Yeah. yeah. No? no. Okay. So discussion uh, regarding this topic uh, because um, bringing on the financial statements and, and updating the financial statements was a very significant part of what, what, we, what, what we were trying to do as a, as a committee. And so when we, we discussed it around the table and many of the uh, uh, board members wanted to have uh, a lot more detail and many of the board members wanted to have lesser detail. So. Um, we, we discussed it at length, and, and as we went, went on, it was decided that uh, through a vote that uh, all of the uh, financial statements would be done uh, in the fashion that, that, that is now on the website. Uh, management has a different detailed level of detail financial statement, and then uh, the finance committee has a different level of detail. So management has a very detailed, finance committee has a quite a quite a detailed set of statements and the directors have, have less. Now, in every case, everybody has the ability to get the additional detail that they want. It's not that any detail is not being provided to anybody. And um, uh, because the, it was decided that the director would get the, the shortened version, that is the version that is approved at the director's level financial statements that are put onto the website. If anybody would be wanting to have detailed sets of financial statements on a monthly basis, uh, um, they can certainly contact the office and the office will work with them to provide that information. They'll be sent out. Pardon me? They'll be sent out if we request them. If, if, if you request it, that you're a member, you're absolutely, yeah. if, you know, if, if you're allowed, if you're, you contact the office and tell them what your desires are, and the, the office will accommodate you in any way that, uh, that you can, absolutely. Thank you, but just to... Yeah, in the, in the formats that we do have, yeah. yes. Yes, but just to reiterate, for the board of directors to only want that minimal list, I, I'm just, I'm a little bit astounded. That is... I've never seen anything like it with any other board that I've had to provide financial statements to. So it's just, I, I don't know how you can possibly make decisions. That's all I'm saying. Well, you, you should. The uh, one, one thing that I do want to say is that every director has the full set of financial statements in full detail available to them to make any decision that they have to make. So it's not as if anything is being withheld, and they do have that ability. Get it. So it is there for every director. It's just that that is not the statement that's approved at the director's level. And since it's not a the level that is approved, the shortened version is the one that's published. Rob Swire, what I understand, you have uh, three sets of financial reports prepared. You have one for management, which would be the extreme detail, I would hope. Get one for the finance committee, which is just as detailed, I hope, budget variances and so on. And then you, then you have the version that the board approves and the, the shareholders get on, online. And from what I just heard you say, I can phone someone monthly, perhaps Darlene, and ask that I get the finance committee version sent to me, or do I have to come here, interrupt her, and sit down and review it? What will be the process that you well, the protocol, I, I think, would be going through day one, first of all. Okay. That, um, uh, and, and then 
you would, you would have a discussion with him, and I would think that you, you would have that ability. No, no, I don't want to discuss it with him. I would yes. like to receive the financial statement yes. so that I can review. Yes, and, and that's what I'm saying is that you discuss it with him what you need, and he will provide that information to you. Thank you. Can you just ask for any other financial questions while Rod's at the podium? Rob, what is the transfer or the entrance fee for this year? Uh, I believe it is it's $8,400 or $8,300 this year. That, uh, I think everybody knows that the entrance fee is what, 40% um, of uh, shares sold in the, in the previous the previous year, and if um, I believe it is it five, is it the yeah. quantity of five, the last five in the in, in, in the year. Me? Darling, no. it's a small. It's Forty percent of the last five the shares that have sold from October of the previous year to yeah. the end of September of this year. Yeah. So by December first, we know what that number is going to be, mm -hmm. and that's what it changes. What are the uh, shares that have traded hands this year? What's roughly the average price that uh, they're going for? Just the share price, do we know? Uh, uh, majority are 20. Yeah. Um, with one or two going for 16, five, 17, 5, and that's entirely up to the share. <coughs>
I don't think I need this, but I'll use it just in case if my voice is too loud, please let me know. Uh, being a retired professor, I used to fill up auditoriums. <laughs> um, I just want to clarify one thing you said, Janice, that I don't think is, is exactly correct. There's been no, first of all, the integrity committee makes no decisions. The integrity committee makes recommendations to the board. And it's the board that makes the decision. So that's the first thing that I think, since there are many of you here, I'd like to clarify. We tried to say this in the newsletters. We started sending it this year. Secondly, the the recommendations that were approved by the board included the work that was done last fall and will be completed this spring. And one addition, the that little parking area which is going to be removed and the creation of a new extended first tee. So that's going ahead. No other recommendations have been made yet or approved <coughs> by the board. There is going to be, once it's determined, the answer you were given as to the budget that's allocated is correct. Once it's determined how much of this coming year's $50,000 budget is expended, <coughs> then the board will be in a position, to, the integrity committee will be in a position to know how much is left for projects to be done. It will then make recommendations to the board for its approval. There was no decision made that the board has approved and there's been no decision yet that has been rescinded. Okay, so I hope that clarifies it. If you have a follow-up, I'd be happy to sort of respond to that. No, I, I, no, I realize that the board makes the final decision, okay. but <clears throat> I mean, the integrity committee, the recommendations that they put forth are are, you know, they hold weight Well, first of all, I should yeah. say that all the, <laughs> yes, no, I mean, what's the sense of the committee of it? I mean, no. the board generally is going to... Yes, and just as the, the integrity committee doesn't make recommendations out of the blue, all of the recommendations that are going forward have been approved, proposed to us by the architect, the integrity committee. We're by and large in the course, when we redid the course many years ago, um, at that time it was decided members weren't going to design the course. We would have professional architects do it. And so all of the recommendations that come to the integrity committee, and we've posted this year, if some of you haven't seen this, it's an opportunity for it to be communicated to you. Online is the original letter the architect <coughs> sent to us. We've posted it now so everyone can see his complete set of recommendations. What the integrity committee does is we meet as a group and each member is asked to give priority. What would they see as the next priorities going ahead? Everyone gets a chance to vote on them, to give a set of rankings. The committee discusses them. Uh, we have expert input from our golf pro, our superintendent. A decision is, is made to go forward to the board. So that's the process that's being used. The integrity committee It's not just making the recommendations themselves. They're, forwarding ones that have already been made by the architect. And I think that's is true. It, is the integrity committee, is there, because it used to be, I don't remember the exact term, golf course? Golf, golf course and... Integrity and, committee, yes. It's one committee, right? There's one, yes, there's a golf course right. integrity committee. So when um, the integrity, integrity committee is meeting, um, are they taking into account um, 
what the architect has indicated to the integrity committee, or what is the process for ensuring that the golf course that we have now, right today, is in the best possible condition that it can be in without any changes? The, the integrity committee is not dealing with that at all. So where's the golf course on? That's management. The management team is taking care of that. So there's none of that anymore. So, so, he, so I think and Dave will correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there's no, there's no properties committee. There is no properties committee, and so if members have concerns about the condition, of course, because this came up to me this year, John. People were coming to me to say X or Y or Z. A very small number of people, and I went and clarified what is the process going to be for it. Should these be going to the integrity committee or not? And I think I'm going to let Dave speak. Where you would like these types of concerns to go in the future, Dave? Um, I think the easiest way to understand it is that I think everybody understands the most sensitive uh, area of any um, club like this is the golf course, and nobody from management would have anything other than input into moving a bunker, for example. That's uh, the privy of the membership. But when it comes down to the conditioning of the golf course, if there's concerns there, um, they should be delivered directly to me. And obviously, we'll discuss that uh, as a management group, and obviously, Glenn is instrumental in that. So definitely the operations, whether it's in here or outside, uh, come to management. Thank you. Barry, did you have, did you have you a have question? Any idea. Bob, you sat down. I can go you want it to I'll come back. I've already had two puppies this <laughs> morning. You guys want to have a cold very long and not ask a lot of questions. Be brief, Robert. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jane? Be brief. Be brief. I'm thirsty. I want to say something about that, Dave. I used to tell my students there was no question, no matter how simple they asked me, that I couldn't find a long answer to. Dorian Cox, as your integrity committee prioritized the changes that the architect had recommended, we know we made them on 2, 3, 18. Uh, three, we're going to do something on one. What are the priorities in, in, in order, ignoring cost, from where we're going from here? There, there, because there's been several years of the committee working, and each year the committee has done priorities. So there is a list there. I can't remember all the priorities. It's, a, it's quite a long list. But there is one. But each year when the committee reconstitutes, some members leave, some new members come on, the committee is free to discuss. There may be changing priorities, you know, slightly different views. Things can change, right? You know, something that seemed to be, you know, a slightly less priority, other people might think has moved up to be a priority. So there is at the moment a tentative, I'm going to call it, I think, a tentative list of priorities, um, you know, but each year the committee will make recommendations. And so what I said to Janice, I'm saying to you, at this point, other than the change that's already been approved by the board to the number one key box in that little park area, nothing else has been moved to the board or ratified for approval. There will be some money left. The integrity committee will have an opportunity, whoever is chairing it this year, whoever is on the committee, to decide what they want to go forward. If I'm the outgoing chairman and there's a new chairman coming in, I will inform the chairman of what we're, give them a list of the priorities that were up to this point where people have the rank, that the new committee is free to move things up or down. And so members, if they wish, you now have access. You, there was the architect was here, he came and spoke to the whole membership. Everything is posted on the site. There's nothing to prevent members. That was the purpose of trying to send out all the information to people so members could be informed. For you to write or speak or tell people, you know, I think this thing that the architect is, is a very high priority and should be done very soon, or I think this is a lesser priority. If you give that input to the committee, then they will have that information in making their decisions. Thanks, Paul. And I think it should be should be noted too for the, the committee. It's very eclectic. It's got a lady on it. It's got a senior on it. It's got a low <laughs> on it. It's got the head professional on it. It's got the manager, the superintendent. So 
that's got a lot of people across the, uh, the golf course that, hit, that play it differently and see the golf course differently. So. And trust me, it, in the integrity committee meetings, it is very heated. Like it, we are listening to the membership, and nothing just goes through rubber stamped. Uh, that's probably one of the most active committee meetings we have. All right. Is there any other questions? Yes. That's a good question. Um, what about the bill? Cal, do you know, I think it's going to change a little bit there. Isn't that the way it's going to come around there for Belgium? Do you want to answer that? Uh, the road is going to stay the same way. Uh, the developer uh, in September improved the road, and so that's what you're going to get. It's not moving. Yeah. Not this year. Um, Actually, Cal, I think it was um, after the golf course was closed, so you may not have been down this way. It's actually been paved almost up to what yeah. 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 so it's a it's a, it's a five what they call five year road. It's a it's not that road is not going to be there in five years. It'll be south, but for right now they did improve that road. The city uh, no the MLC improved the road. Thanks, Kelvin. Does that answer your question? That's good. Okay. Any other questions? Very good. Hearing none, everyone. Thank you again very much. Let's have a great 2014 and let's go on with the winner here. Thank you.